Yeah. Okay, let's get started uh, with this number, room number two, uh, 200 and 205. Nobody can find it directly. <laughs> uh, only, only Stanford uh, insiders. Uh, I'll be very brief in introducing uh, Professor Liu uh, Yimi. Um, I teach uh, in the Department of East Asian Languages and, and Culture. Um, now, uh, uh, on behalf of the, uh, our department, the uh, Center of East Asian Studies and the Confucius Institute, uh, it's my delight uh, to present once again in two weeks, in two weeks uh, our distinguished speaker, uh, Du Yiming. Uh, professor Du Yiming is a lifetime professor of philosophy and the director of the Institute for Advanced Humanistic Studies at Peking University. Uh, he's also a research a professor and senior fellow at the, at the Asian Center at Harvard University. Uh, he was born in Kunming and grew up in Taiwan. Uh, he went to study, uh, uh, he got his uh, BA in Dohai University uh, in Taiwan and he got his <coughs> MA and PhD uh, at Harvard University. Uh, last week, I pre I highlighted this uh, in the national statue of all the allocates and honors he got his uh, his uh, international fame and his uh, public uh, his uh, great public figure. Right. Uh, I will say a little bit about uh, something about uh, related to today's uh, topic as public. Confucian humanism as a scholarly inquiry. And we all know that the, uh, there's been a confusion last two decades, there's been a confusion, uh, uh, this upsurge of interest in, in Confucianism. Uh, but before this time, uh, the intellectual climate and the political environment uh, had, been, had been quite harsh, right? Uh, if not nasty. Uh, against the uh, Confucian uh, residue, to be like I treated it as a sort of feudal tra trash. But even during this time, uh, there was a, a group of uh, scholars, uh, very small, small group, uh, who made tremendous, almost heroic effort to preserve uh, Confucian learning. Uh, uh, this uh, this small group actually uh, include uh, uh, luminous uh, names like Qian Mu, Tang Junyi, Mo Zhongshan, uh, and also Xi Fu Guan and so on, and many people. They they built this um, new Asian college. It was the earlier uh, school that later became the uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong, Jiangnan Zhong Yeah. Uh, they really make a tremendous, uh, painful effort to transmit, to keep Confucian uh, learning alive, to, to carry the torch forward. And Professor Tu, uh, I'm very, very honored to say, is the third generation of this group of, of people uh, who uh, made a tremendous effort. At that time, he went to China uh, in, went to mainland China in 19. Uh, 80 uh, to, uh, to teach a, a, a course in <coughs> philosophy, uh, which I, I read about in his uh, visit and his exchange with uh, Chinese scholar at the time, Du Shu, in the week, uh, reading uh, that magazine. And he went again uh, to, to Beida uh, in uh, 1985, and he uh, was to teach a course in uh, Confucian philosophy. And he was very surprised to, to find that uh, this course, Confucian philosophy, was last taught in before before his arrival. Uh, it was last taught in Beida in 1923 <laughs> by, by uh, Yang Shumi. Uh, and he confirmed that by talking with Yang yeah, So it was actually a sort of barren, but uh, it's really it's a, it's a barren, sort of uh, un uncultivated. It's just uh, it laid waste. Uh, and then Professor Du went with this uh, mission, right? Rekindle, rekindle the, the study and interest and, uh, and, and 
in Confucian philosophy, and you see that now the Confucian centers and all the whole range, right, the whole range to study Confucianism blossom, right, uh, flourish in China these days. Uh, and it, it's two things that I, I need to say about, about this whole almost like a missionary and evangelical part uh, of the, the campaign to spread, uh, to spread Confucian philosophy. One, one is the whole idea of East Asian, uh, Confucian East Asian, right? Uh, just, like, just as Max Weber uh, tried to, uh, try to explain the, the, the growth of capitalism by tracing the root in the Protestant uh, ethics, uh, the, the whole group, the new uh, Confucianists, of your, uh, one of the champions <laughs> to try to illuminate uh, the East Asian mirror, uh, the development of capitalism and, uh, and growth uh, in East Asia uh, by tracing these roots in Confucian like work, Confucian ethics. Uh, so, this is the, the uh, a huge phenomenon, and, and it's very, very influential uh, uh, as a discourse uh, to, to uh, identify the East Asian cultural form uh, in uh, modernity. Okay. So, uh, another thing is that the whole thrust, academic uh, scholarly thrust of the, the neo-Confucianist, uh, Xi Wujia, it's not a neo-Confucianist, right? It's, it's just the Song Dynasty, but to deal with the neo, uh, uh, the, the whole thrust is very, very global. The, the purpose to sum up uh, with the Professor Zhu's word, uh, words uh, is the attempt at exploring the historical significance and contemporary relevance of the core values in Confucian humanism. Uh, this is a basic, uh, uh, basic uh, preoccupation with Confucian China and its modern faith, and is to, to articulate and illuminate the relevance uh, of traditional core values uh, to the modern world. Uh, that's why from Confucian. Uh, Confucian. <laughs> Thank you very much for your very kind uh, introduction. Uh, <laughs>